In this video, I'm going over setting up RetroArch for all the retro gaming so you can emulate any game you want in Linux. This video is brought to you by Purism, makers of the Librem 5 phone. Pre-orders go up by $50 at the end of July and the release date has been set for Q3 of this year. So RetroArch is a pretty powerful tool. I absolutely love it. Uh, one thing I love most about it is it's tied into retroachievements.org so you can do all these achievements on your old games. So this is a lot of fun, a way to kind of relive all that nostalgia and actually kind of get uh, a little bragging rights and say, hey, check out my profile and you can see all of your retro games you actually beat in this entire game or whatever it might be. I just really dig the retro achievements and uh, that's a neat tie-in with RetroArch. Now, RetroArch is also a great interface for just standard Linux desktop. They have the controller navigated one, which I'm going to go over in this video. And then they're starting to develop like a desktop version of it where you can easily just be having it up on your desktop. And it's, it's pretty awesome. So uh, with that, uh, let's go ahead and jump over to the desktop, install RetroArch, and then actually configure it. Okay, so we start out by installing RetroArch. Now, if you don't want to use a snap, which is what I used, you can install the repository, either Ubuntu or Debian, which is what I'm on. Um, you can easily come down into this article. I'll go ahead and link it in the description down below. You basically add a PPA if you're in Ubuntu or just add the repository and the key if you're in Debian. Now, obviously for Arch users, it's much easier. You just go right to the repository and just do it in Pac-Man. So both those are very good. I don't recommend using the Git, um, but that's entirely up to you. Now for me, since I'm using an experimental version of Debian, I couldn't do this method because all of my all the all of RetroArch's dependencies are actually above the version that it wants. So it actually wants an older version of many of these dependencies, and I just simply can't provide that. So I opted to go with a snap, um, and I did it that way. You could also do Flatpak; it's also right here as well. So uh, you could also do it this method. Now for the snap, all I did was just a sudo snap install retro arch, just like this. And um, you know, if you look at the listing, you'll see it in here. So that's all I did for this video. And then it just shows up everywhere I need it to be. And I like this method because it's not integrating any of those dependencies. And I've covered this in a variety of different videos, but you choose what's best for you. But with RetroArch installed right now, let's go ahead and jump into the configuration of RetroArch because it can kind of be confusing for a new user. So we go ahead and launch RetroArch. I like to do full screen mode when I do RetroArch and you're kind of presented with this. So I'm gonna break this down real quick. Now, if you want to know which cores are the best ones to use, Game Boy Advance, I like MGBA. For Nintendo, I like the Nestopia one the best. For N64, Moop and 64 Plus is pretty much the de facto standard. And then for Super Nintendo, SNEX 9X is what I like to use. The rest of these, honestly, uh, Sega, Pico Drive is pretty much the standard. And then uh, standard PlayStation usually uses the ReArmed uh, emulator. So these are the emulators I like to do. Some guides and walkthroughs out there have you install all the cores. And that is entirely confusing. I don't like to do that. It bloats your system up. It's entirely not necessary. Typically, everyone likes a couple old systems and you don't need literally 50 systems on your computer. Now, if you want to, more power to you. However, for me, this is kind of my trip down nostalgia lane revolves around all these emulators. So to install those cores, we simply go down to the online updater, core updater, and then we select the core that we want to install. Now there's a lot of options, especially like when you get down to any Nintendo down here, you'll see that there's a lot of different emulators and that's why I wanted to give you that overview of the actual emulators I use because uh, that'll help you have a lot better experience because some of these emulators are kind of experimental and don't work very well. So once we have our cores installed, we need to point to where all our ROM files exist. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up my file explorer 
and show you all of my files. So let's pull up this and I put them in a games directory. Uh, actually, ROMs is where I put them. Now I put GBA, N64, NES, and SNES games for this. If we go into like SNES, you'll see all my SNES games that I have on here. So we know that it's in this directory up here, and now we need to simply get into uh, RetroArch and do that. So let's go ahead and close that out. I'm gonna pull RetroArch back up. Okay, so once you have this, you simply need to go back and then over all the way to the right into where you get to this little icon. You wanna scan that directory. We just simply go scan, navigate to our ROMs directory, and then we just say scan this directory. And then it goes through, scans all your ROM files and goes ahead and adds them to there. So we added the cores, we're scanning the directory for any extra ROM files. And while it's doing that, we can just kind of go back and then it adds all this. Now, you'll notice I have these nice little cover art on the right hand side. Now, that doesn't actually come by default. So all this cover art, isn't there so what you need to go back and do is come back here and then go back to your online updater and then do a thumbnails updater now if we looked there was nothing on the snes so we'd actually want to actually download and update that so for that i'd click on nintendo's super nintendo entertainment system it would go out and download it most of these don't take any time to download the thumbnails however the snes version right now I think it's repo is like running on a 56k modem or something because it takes forever but all the other ones are actually have downloaded for me in usually a matter of seconds so uh, that's pretty cool but I can just leave this running in the background and eventually it'll download um, and from here we are ready to actually play a game so let's say we come over here and I, I'm a huge fan of Final Fantasy 6 that's my favorite Final Fantasy uh, and I wanted to play this, I could actually click on this, click run, click this, and then hit run start content. Now this actually pulled up in my other screen. Let me drag it down. And then we can just go ahead and click through all this. And that goes ahead and does it. So I went ahead and hit escape. Uh, to exit, I went ahead and programmed it to where I have to press it twice just so I don't accidentally escape. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go back to RetroArch. Now, if I didn't want to do that, we can change the configuration, and there's a couple little changes I'd like to make on RetroArch. So the first, if we go into our configuration and we go into input, press quit, quit twice to exit so there's a lot of times you accidentally hit your exit escape key and it would just completely kill retro arch i like to tick this on so you have to hit it twice um, the second thing is menu toggle now you notice i hit escape twice to kill my game um, however i don't want to do that every time because then i'm constantly relaunching it let's say i'm having a retro night and going through five or six games or this is on a dedicated home theater pc and it only has a controller that's always running RetroArch. So in this case, I would come back and let's go back into, let's say Legend of Zelda. Now on Legend of Zelda here, it's pulling up. We got the classic theme in the background. Now if I hit start and select, it just pulls it back here. And from here I can go, okay, close the content. And there we go. We're back to our main screen without actually having to relaunch, which is pretty awesome. And this is just kind of the basics of it. Um, what I like to do, like obviously I'm gonna play through Link to the Past, but let's say there's a couple other ROMs in here I really liked and wanted to play through. Um, let's go back to SNES and pull up Kung Fu or the original Legend of Zelda per se. I can click this and say add to favorites. This is kind of neat, especially when you get a lot of ROM files. Um, then you can kind of isolate down to your favorites right here and kind of have them all just at a touch of a button, which is pretty awesome. So there you go. That is RetroArch in a nutshell. I absolutely love RetroArch. 
Again, it's a great way to relive nostalgia without having a separate box. I actually set up a lot of uh, dedicated ones on like Raspberry Pi, but when I went to play some like PlayStation games, certain N64 games like GoldenEye, uh, the performance was a little laggy, so it was really nice just to put it on my Linux box, play it right here at the PC, and not have to worry about it. But let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And a big shout out to my patrons. Without you, this video would not be possible. And I'll see you on the next one.